Today, I was working at my cousin's place. We were restoring some very old benches from the church. And so today, we brought back the benches and we had to fix them. So it was a very small church uh, in the countryside. But it's kind of a famous church because there is a famous painting uh, in it. And the task was really a, a boring and kind of tiresome task just to screw on the, the benches. So we had to lay on the floor and try to uh, fix the benches. And sometimes I took a rest and then I looked at the ceiling and there is a wonderful, beautiful picture. Uh, it's a scenery, of course, from the Bible. And the colleague I was working with, he, he became very angry because he said, ah, these paintings are terrible. And I asked him, what's going on? He said, well, it reminds me that I cannot paint by myself. And I thought, oh, actually, that's, that's really stupid. <laughs> that's, that's not the idea when you see something of beauty or you go to a museum and uh, art uh, connects with you. It's, it's the feeling of being part of something bigger. That's really the beautiful uh, thing with art or in this church. It was, it was a heavy task we had to do physically. It was cold. We were laying on the floor. A tough job. And then suddenly when you saw this picture, you kind of were lost in the picture and you became a part of something bigger. That's really, that's why art touches us. So, and my colleague is a very simple minded guy. So, uh, uh, I took him and show, showed him around in the church and explained the, the, the meanings of the pictures. And slowly, slowly, he also got lost in to be part of the bigger one. So, and that's is beauty and art is really the thing you feel lost in a good way because you feel you are part of something bigger. So let's re-examine this a little bit more. <clears throat> so after several, several hours laying on the cold floor under this big five meter long heavy benches. I was asking my colleague, hey, what are you doing? And he was cursing a lot because the, the screws just didn't work as well. So <clears throat> he said, oh, I'm trying to fix that. So I said, let's have a rest. Let's sit, let's sit on the bench. And we sat there and checked out the church. And I said, well, you know, every Sunday people will sit on this bench. They listen to the monks and they see the ceiling, the church. It's very beautiful. So you're not just working on that screw. 
you also are part that they can sit and have maybe one hour or two hour not thinking about their suffering because life and death is very tough we have to take care of other people we have to take care of our business or six children and sickness and age or maybe sickness and old age of one of our family members so it's really tough and then maybe when you have one hour you just can emerge in beauty you're actually helping with each screw hard work you're part of something bigger and he really never encountered this thought so I told him you're not just working on that screw and now let's go back to that tiny horrible screw and the next few hours he was cursing he was back at cursing <laughs> but he had a a different purpose so we need to have a name because without this aim it's just meaningless and I like to work with that guy a lot and it's good to check out what is my aim what I'm aiming for because without that aim it's just random suffering so and when we see art or listen to the very old stories it's always to be part of something bigger and that is actually what we always do by ourselves we have a good and clear aim and this is the bigger one and each and every action is the way to this aim so when after nine hours before we left the church he stopped and asked me isn't it beautiful and I said well when the old monkey whistles, there's wall after wall. Thank you very much.